Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Go Malta Esports Festival. We're here on Saturday, day two, as Omnia, who just crushed Team Paradox, will be taking on IX Stream. My name is Hitbrain, and joining me on the cast of Death today will be Archeron once again. Hello, everyone. So let's see if IX Stream is capable of taking down the guys that took down Paradox, that took down IX Stream. Eh? <laughs> well, I say, uh, <laughs> first thing you want to probably do there is ban Orn. Um, he has exactly. been exactly. He has been the major kind of winning factor for all of these teams so far. As much as he's exciting to watch, there's going to be the ban. So a mouse hard ban here by Omnia. So let's see what the next ban will be. If we are debating and if we are analyzing the fact that those teams will, well, at least lean a little bit on the wombo combo, Orn is the guy to go. So on the table now, we have now for the top line Maokai is a solid pick as well. All those picks could come into the top side because Orn has been banned. On the second one, let's see what they take. Looking at the mid lane? No, again, looking at the misfortune. That has been showing off in the picks and the bans. With Meteor, the new kind of keystone, it just you can apply so much lane <laughs> pressure, and it's really hard to dodge it when you've got the, uh, the make it rain on top of you because you're slowed by that. So understandable ban here coming through from the side of Omnia. Don't want to let that get through. What is first pick worthy? What's going to be left open? Those are the questions. Is Zin Sao still available, which we've seen a lot of the teams put a lot of preference on as well. So if CJ's Mad Smoke doesn't ban it, I expect them to maybe try and pick it up. But I'm disappointed with Zin Sao. Until now, only one game where he got a victory, if I'm not mistaken. He's won both the games he's played, Zin Sao. Oh, yes, he did. At, the, uh, at, this, still... at this tournament, he has a 100% win rate so far. But still, let's see the, the deciding key factor on, on, the, on the victory because. We've seen him a little bit behind every single time. So, I don't know. Both the times we've seen Zin Zhao, he's kind of played more into a kind of sacrificial lamb. He dives into the back line, lays out a bit of damage, ults to spread the team fight apart, and then the rest of the team tidy up for him. And that's where his strength has really come from. But there are other picks. There's the Ramus. We're going to see the Ezri on the time hench band come through Shivana, someone we haven't seen yet. And we've both been hyping the Shivana up, saying it is going to be really juicy when that gets through. Do you think Hecarim could be a little bit more wise in terms of a team-based game? Shivana, Shivana will farm non-stop. I don't know if I, I want to see her or if I'm a little bit on the no, please don't pick Shivana and farm all game. <laughs> she was my first it champion, worked. so I, I, I kind of I have, a, I have a deep a place in my heart for Shivana. Naomi's <laughs> going to be the first pick by Omnia, so they're going actually for the first pick on the support, knowing that Orin's been taken away. That opens up the Jarvin for Finally. iExtreme to grab their hands on. That was a jungle that we could we didn't really talk too much about. First time we're gonna see Jarvan on the table now. And uh what will he run? There's a lot of options in terms of rune runes for him. You can actually pair him with it's not the shockwave, it's the aftershock. Okay, I got the name right this time. You can <laughs> pair him up with the aftershock, go for a more tanky build, or you can go for an assassin build wise. Jindo, the four shot man versus a Nami. So he could be locked in and the the ultimate from Nami can just delete the curtain skull unless you bring Brom with you. Will they bring a Brom? There are still a few options available for them in that support role. Leona, Alistair still available as well. Victorious Rain is going to pick up the Urgot in the top lane. He was crushing on the Orn in the last game. So it's going to be exciting to see how he fares up on the Urgot. But who can they pick into that? Against Urgot, well, Nar could be one of those picks. I love the Singed versus Urgot, I gotta tell you, because you can we don't kill see him mid animation of his ultimate. He can actually pull you in to destroy you, to actually execute you, but you can kill him with a poison, and the, the execute will be nullified. It's a, it's a weird interaction, I know, I'm all about weird interactions, I love them. But uh, no, Nar could be one of those picks into the top line. I'm surprised we haven't seen Pantheon running Irie. Because it's it's devastating as well. It's going to be Leona lock, lock in into the bot lane. Oh, massive AOE again! As the soon AOE. as you get a Jarvan and a Leona, you know it's going to be an explosive <laughs> game. Zaya was also picked up for Omnia, so now we're going to move through to the bands. And I expect to see iExtreme kind of really pinch that support pool. Uh, sorry, that jungle pool. While Omnia are probably going to want to try and pitch the top lane, get that Nar ban out, get a bunch of bands out of the way, which will give Urgot a freer lane. Man, that combo is scary. The Jarvan with the Cataclysm and the Eclipse. I, I mean, that's a beauty 10. That's a beauty 10. You get locked in for like five seconds and then you get the sun all over. The 10 is coming in hot. It's going to be a Nivea yet again. 
That's a lot of molten yeah. special, isn't it, and Nivea? Everyone yeah. loves it over here. Now, what we could also see is maybe something like a Kennen top, because the fact Ooh. that they've got the Leona and the Jarvin means they've already got a pretty tanky front line they can use if they do if they choose to make the uh, Jarvin go tanky, meaning that they have a big wombo combo with a Kennen. And then there they can pick something with solid wave clear in the mid lane. So there's quite a few options. There goes the Xin Zhao. So he's not going to be coming through for Omnia this game. And Oriana will be the final ban for Omnia. I'm surprised we haven't seen Gangplank at all with the Klepto. Really surprised. He's one of those picks that has been running a mock in, in terms of ranks. But until now, not showing himself on a competitive, at least in this specific tournament. There's still a possibility. It's going to be the Corky into the mid lane. Yeah, the top laner is still missing for Team Paradox. I am worrying a little bit about the wave clear. Obviously, Corky does get decent wave clear once he hits six and he has that Triforce completed, but it's not power fast wave clear. Something like a Syndra could offer, something like the Oriana could offer. I know it's banned, but there is very little wave clear really for mm. iExtreme here. And if they fall behind, they might struggle to clear those waves. Vladimir's going to get picked up by Omnia as well, so that's going to be their pick in the mid lane. And we're going to see Ramus come through for Van Cleef here. Okay, go Gangplank. Just, just do it. You are able to bypass the armor of Ramus by itself. You can get the wave clear you were talking about. Yeah. I know it's a physical. I, I know everybody's like, but it's physical. Gangplank, it's physical. I know, but... You can ah, you can just thank your A through with Shen. That no, looks like they're trying to keep their squishy targets alive. Shen will get locked <laughs> in for I Extreme. Now, for anyone who didn't tune in last night, one of the things that happened was uh, Team Paradox beat down I Extreme in 20 minutes, getting a penta kill onto their ADC as well. So lots of kind of things are probably running through I Extreme's head at the moment. They're probably a little kind of thrown from last night's game. So. Let's see if they can bounce back here against Omnia, who were the team that beat Team Paradox just before this game. So how is that mindset? Are they a little bit on the low at this point? Because they had the game. They had such a big lead in terms of kills. Because in terms of goal, they were tied up. But when you are inside of the game, you don't know that. You don't know how much gold the enemy has. So if you look at the scoreboard and you are ahead by seven kills, I believe it was seven, eight kills. You yeah. think, okay, big lead. we have a big lead. And they still lost. That could actually bring long-term uh, trauma <laughs> into this tournament for Team Paradox. Omnia beat them out. They were down in gold, uh, sorry, down in kills for the, pretty much the entirety of the game until they finally found themselves one fantastic team fight. And it was right next to Baron Asher, so they just managed to pick it up and walk it down from there. And then we saw Team Paradox take... What looked like a good engage, Alistair knocked up four members, but it just wasn't enough. The damage wasn't there. And we saw almost a chink in the armor with Team Paradox, where as soon as they kind of fell behind, they didn't really know what to do. But Omnia, definitely a team who now has to play from both behind and ahead. Mm -hmm. They showed that in that last game. And so far, we haven't seen I Extreme kind of play a slow tempo game, maybe take it a little bit more chill. With the fact that they're running the Corky and the Jin, that is what I'm kind of expecting out of them. Now, how will this match fare out? I'm looking at the Ramas and the top laner, Victorious Brain with Urgot. That could be an interesting combo to just push uh, Kurama a little bit behind at the beginning of the game. There are ways to bypass the refugee of Shen. Urgot can shred through the HP of Shen in the early game and push him against the turret. They want to do that and lock in the jungle gank. Vladimir on the mid lane. This is also another thing that I want to see. What sort of rune will he bring into the mid lane with Vladimir? A lot of people have been trading off with Aerie, even Grasp of the Undying and bringing the other mastery that allows you to get more max HP, which will empower your AP. So it's, it's really weird until now to know what is a stable pick in terms of rune for Vladimir. And since this is a best of one, you could you can't just adapt into the next game. Okay, these runes didn't work out. I'm gonna use these runes versus them. No, no, this is this is a one point wonder. You need to land those solid picks. Hitman 14 on the Corky is running teleport, which means that they do have that kind of advantage to them. Or they'll be running almost the triple teleport with the Shen thrown in the mix against the side of Omnia. So rotations will be a lot faster for I Extreme and. Corky naturally should push the Vladimir in a little bit. Vladimir's kind of wave clear is nowhere near what a Corky can do. 
So mm -hmm. I expect to see this kind of push into him and then Hitman can look to roam around the map, especially once he gets that package. It's going to be down to see how Chongi can play this match out because he played exceptionally well in the last game. So 25 seconds until we can jump into the loading screen and see what monsters are they going to bring. Nami and Zaya, they have such a poke potential and also ability to disengage if they want versus the Leona and Jin. So I believe Leona Jin will have to go all in at level two and get something out like two summoner spells, allowing uh, Jarvan to go to the bot line and then push a little bit harder and get a first blood. Because they, if they let it slide, Nami eventually will allow Zaya to just heal herself and actually disengage Leona if they want to. Imagine if Leona goes in now without the fervor of battle. You can just aqua prison the Jin and realize, okay, there's not that much damage coming in from Leona, so we are comfortable. It's running the grasp of the undying on Leona. So it's got that 4% of your health percent damage coming through. It's going to be the... Um, Thunder Lords is going to get picked up. It's not Thunder Lords. It's the Electrocute, sorry, for the Jin, uh, Javen. The name is not as beautiful as Thunder Lords. You know it. <laughs> uh, it screams that he's going all damage. Actually, we do have a look at the Jin is also running Meteor, so going for that kind of almost MF-style poke lane. But we finally loaded through onto Summoner's Rift. Omnia will be taking on IA Extreme. One more time, guys. Let us know in the Twitch chat who you think will win. Will it be Omnia? Will it be IA Extreme? I'm really excited to see if IA Extreme can bounce back from that colossal loss they were handed yesterday. There we go. And a pause. We have a little pause, and this will give us time to look into the masteries. Let me see. So, Klepto on Corky. This is exactly what we were speaking about. Uh, Grasp of the Undying on Leona, though. You only... You will only use it if you are on, if you are fighting for four whole seconds. And Leona wants to go in, gets the engage, and then bails out. Aftershock would be amazing because it insta procs once you get the Zenith Blade, and as soon as you get there and you get the the stun, the stun is over and you deal that AOE damage, also with the damage reduction, obviously. Well, pause it doesn't last forever, so we're finally out and we're good to go. I'm pumped. We've had some really explosive games here from Malta. I've always loved this about casting the Malta scene. Is no matter what game I cast, if it's Overwatch, if it's League of Legends, the games are just mad. These players love just to fight all the time. And it makes for really exciting games. And Omnia are no different from that. Okay, a little shady business in the mid lane as everybody's just going <laughs> around. Let's see what they're trying to set up. The, it's going to be the, the normal and standard start for both junglers. Ramos will start on the blue side. Eventually, we'll go to the Raptors and then to the red buff because it's so easy to do the Raptors with Ramos if you have a, a Hunter's Talisman. You actually get sustained. You don't take damage. But that is really good for him in the jungle. Oh, he's actually going to start straight up on the, on the red buff. Not even going for the Raptors. He's going to get a leash. If he's not going for the Raptors second, it's going to surprise me a lot. I'd assume that is what he's going to do, but we'll have to see if what that is what is the plan so far. His blue side start will come through from the Jarvin from Bloodhound. Everyone else just taking their position in the lane, pushing up a little bit, just Getting himself ready to go into the game as Chunky's already taken a little bit of damage from Hitman. Not entirely unexpected in this matchup. Interesting, he dodged the Raptors and he went for the Wolves. Okay, interesting in my mind at least. And Ooh. really big engage on the bot lane. Yes, DG just lost a lot of health. Mad Smoke soaked it up for his ADC, but remember he does have the at ebb and flow, so he can heal himself up and poke at the same time. So, not particularly the start that I think I Extreme wanted on the Leona Jin to have DG running on half health. He does have that crucial four shot. We and go. we're seeing the ulti come down. That's going to be first blood. The bubble goes up. And then now is Axmerich looking for the kill. He has got the root available if he can line the feathers up. Just going to walk away now. And they trade one for one in the bot lane. Both summoner spells burn on both of the ADCs. But it's going to be the lead for Zaya. Even though there's a first blood, this will allow Zaya to just push in on the line if she wants to go back or if she wants to stay in the lane and get a lot of experience while Jin was forced to go back. There we go. 
She's going to go back. She has the uh, oh, 800 gold. Not enough for the Cocktails Warhammer. Only a double long sword and a pot and a control ward to get himself going into the early game. So that's still a lead versus Jin. Exactly. Is a pretty solid lead. Got that extra long sword in there. Has also got that control ward. Jin does, did get an extra pot at least, so he has a little bit more lane sustain. But also keep in mind that Asmalex has got an army, so Ebb and Flow will keep him nice and topped up in lane. So seeing Victorious Rain and Extreme Kuruma just trading it out here in this top lane. It's quite a hard matchup for the... Oh! For the Shen. But Top we actually have a gank, yeah. All the junglers are about. The taunt's being thrown down. Here comes Bloodhound. He's managed to find a knockup, and he's also going to get thrown oh, over by Victorious Rain with the flash out. Looking for the kill on the Kruma. He's going to find it. No, Kruma gets it and gets a red buff. Vankley tidies it up, and they trade two for one in the top side. And yet again, I extreme with the lead because they still have a member who is capable of pushing and getting the additional experience. That was a massive fight oh, off online. Good bubble. It looks like the roots there. It looks like oh. Asmodex can do it. He doesn't have a flash. One more oh, yeah. attack. And the airy finds the kill. Now Gijo has to be careful of the blade cooler. It could come out. The ebb and flow is there. And Asmodex has forced the flash away from DJ. Oh, oh, the root comes down. The flash is out. And Mad Smoke goes mad with the double. I extreme gaming surprising on every single line of offensive. All oh, top line finish teleport. There's the Ramus. This is good for you, man. This is good he for has you. Double buff. <laughs> he can heal up. He's just looking for that recall now. It looks like they're just gonna cool off that top lane action. Oh man. Oh lord. Onia is showing up this game. Five to two. It's not over. Just Victorious Rain and Kuruma having a bit of a trade out here. Unfortunately, he is pretty tanky, although you can't take too many of those from Victorious <laughs> Rain because that hurts. Okay, now, looking at the rest of the lines, because we have a moment of solitude at this <laughs> point. The Vladimir was capable of getting Lucidity Boots, so cooldown reduction is stacking up for him. But there's no resists, no HP also for this Vladimir, which means Corky will be able to burst him out, not outpoke him, because he's reaching that level 9 power spike for Vladimir, which gets you the Q on level 5, which is so good for cooldown reduction and sustainability. While on the other side, Hitman, ha he has to get some lead on the beam. Oh, he there wants it. Rain. He can throw him over if he wants. There he goes, pops him over, pops down the W as well. Good shit, uh, Spirit's Refuge from Kuruma will keep it alive for now, but now we see the Root followed Bloodline. up by the bubble as they're looking to shade him. A Bloodhound gets the kill. A three-man Root from Asmalik will secure him at least a path to safety. There's a Ramus, though. There's a Ramus and a Zaya versus three guys. He's waiting for Jarvan to go away. He's gone. Oh, he is waiting about. He does not have flash, so he can't flash onto any targets. And he's Lit just concentrating him. everywhere. Mid lane seems to be the only lane you want to play in if you just want to kind of play calm. <laughs> for the time being, for the time, for the time being, being. Because yeah. as soon as Vladimir gets a hold of that proto belt, Corky will have a bad time. I know he has Klepto, so probably he will find some items that are going to prove itself useful. To be a tough one. Oh, oh he, he, <laughs> <has a present! laughs> he got him! Victorious Rain finds the opening and now Bangley gets the taunt in. Here comes Asmari. He's trying to throw out the double daggers. Can't connect it for the root though. And G Joe and DG are out of there. What a snipe on the top lane on Kurama. He saw the shield was going low and he knew the percentage HP odds. Oh, 3v1, Ramus. Okay. Oh, Van Cleef not in a position he wants to be in. And DJ and GG are there to secure the kill. Bloodhound gets his second kill of the game. Hitman has had a little bit of a trade with Chongi, but he's coming out on the better end of that so far. In the mid lane, Hitman making an homage for Freak. Getting two mana pots in a row. So... No running out of mana for the mid lane Hitman, which will allow him to poke constantly versus Shongi. He was already getting himself comfortable. Level 7, two levels away from the mass transfusion. It's going to be pretty disgusting when he lows down for it now. Chongi actually potentially trading out here. Hitman loses a lot of health for that electrocute. Victorious Rain, maybe looking for another opening onto Extreme Kuruma. 
Okay, okay. Moments of breath. Nozmalex as the ultimate alongside with Med Smoke. Almost getting left level 6. Let me see how long until Nami gets level 6. Oh, he's still behind by a lot. It's going to take him a long time to get that level 6 on Nami, which means JJO can use this opportunity to go ham and try to get a kill on Nami. No flash available. This could be the window they're looking for. He's been finding some pretty decent openings. But remember, Featherstorm is available to Asmalex as well, so he does have the ability to dodge the Leona all in if he needs it. But the deadly flourish and the follow up that can come through from DG is going to be massive. Top plan could have a visit. Jarvan is speaking, but there's a ward, so probably you will not be able to close in the gap. Or maybe we will. So looking for the taunt, goes a little bit wide, and Bloodhound is still standing on a ward, so Victoria's Reign should be playing safe, although he's still playing with fire at this point. Look at Onya on the other side of the map, instantly going aggressive with the mid lane and in the jungle, trying to get the counter jungle flowing in, and Corky coming back into the mid lane, but probably will find himself oh, oh. Ramus. Like and drag! Oh, there's the dunk onto Victorious Reign! Forces his flash away to safety. And now Hitman hanging around with that package, looking for potentially an opening into the bot lane. As both Vladimir and Ramus aren't quite there yet. He got the package, but he wasted most of the time of the package just getting the, those control wards. But it's the most safe time to actually go for the control wards. Because if you see someone, you can Ooh. just use this to get away. But Chongi has Blood Pool, so he's going to be out of there nice and easy. He may play Cleanse and Flash still available, so he did not have a thing to worry about. But Asmalek has to throw down the Feather Storm, Love. looking for the Blade Cooler. Here comes the layered CC as Gijo is going to get rooted up. Mad Smoke is ignited, and DG manages to find the kill. The shot! The but back oh, yeah. with the Flash, with the Taunt! Shen's come in, they're looking for a little bit more damage, and Shen can't make it in because the ulti came through from Victorious Reign. He will get dropped on the other side. They're looking for a little bit more damage, and now a Teleport, teleport. is getting thrown out. Two Teleports make that. Hitman has it. There's the flag, there's the drag. There's there's the kill onto Hitman 14 as Van Cleef is running towards Vladimir. Run, Turtle, run! It's a Boots of Ability kicking in, so it's comfortable. The way Onya just forced themselves into a massive explosion, and well, on the top side, Victoria's Brain knew that he had to stop that Stan United to get his team some sort of lead, but that put him in jeopardy because he had to take the turret. He got taunted in range to the turret, and He's still not tanky enough. It's an Urgot. I mean, in 20 minutes, he will be able to do that, but now he was not capable. So that was actually really good for iExtreme Gaming, using that leverage on the bot lane and all that massive damage that they have as well. In the mid lane, they're trying to push in. They really want this tier 1 turret. Well, we were questioning whether or not we thought iExtreme could bounce back from the loss they were handed yesterday. It looks like the answer to that is yes, they're not letting that get into their head and Omnia are getting challenged by them. 700 gold is what separates both of these teams here as we do hit that 10 minute mark. Djo and DG, the curse of a team, of a name for me to pronounce, I hate it. Um, they're, having, they're actually bouncing back because they were really suffering yesterday against the Team Paradox bot lane. The MF Alistair, which really crushed them. This time, they're going for the aggressive pick potential lane, and they are making it work. In the mid lane, there's the gun, alongside with the level 9. So Chongi now can't die if he plays careful enough. On the top lane, Black Lever now showing up. Ooh. Hurt. Van Cleef's got it. Fear of Death and Beyond is also oh, available, yeah. so they could throw it out. But the layer of the CC means Mad Smoke goes down for a fourth time. And we see Krumer in that top side. He did peel away with half of his health. Is Chongi? You, you good, mate? Ooh. Oh, yes, he is. <laughs> That's the thing. Cooldown reduction in level 9. Oh, Asmalex could be dove. He could be, but remember, all of the abilities were thrown down onto Mad Smoke, including that Ignite. So for now, he's okay, but they're looking for the Zenith Blade. Root oh. is available. Asmalex is going 1v2. Blade Schooler and Featherstorm's thrown out, but he gets rooted up. Jijo with the fourth shot. The cures the kill. Bloodhound turns up and helps them push the wave in. This should be first turret in the bot side. What a perfect timing for him to commit Seppuko because now they will be able to get the tier one turret. It's going to be first blood turret. This is exactly what they needed. 
And this is exactly what they got. They have a Leona and a Jin. They need the early game kills. And they got them. Four kills on Jin. Going accordingly to plan. I extreme. Oh, oh Sushi! Oh no! Duncan blown up as Gijo finds the kill. Taurus still under fire. Is a Jin, so he does kind of suffer a little bit when it comes to taking waves and taking towers, sorry. But Van Cleef has shown up to try and defend. Does have a taunt, so he can actually get tower aggro if he wants to. Who is he going to look for? Is he just going to try and clear the wave out? <laughs> he has to get close to them. Coming through, they're going for it. Deadly Flourish comes oh. down, and now he has to make something happen. Pops the ultimate, and now they're going for the 1v2. Double Daggers comes out with a root. The snare comes out, and it's going to be Van Cleef. He finds the kill. Bloodhound looking for a little bit more. Van Cleef is a little below and forced to flash away. Go one for one in the bot lane and do give up first turret. But Curtain's Victoria's gone. Reign is opening up. Here comes the curse and cool. I don't think it's going to find anyone as double daggers are there. Asmalex Looking for a DJ. Oh, Asmalex gets it. Now the taunt comes out and they're not done. Bloodhound is so low. Has got himself a little bit of damage and is going to run away to the tower. Gets out of dodge now. But that was close. Asmalex looking into death and he said, I've been here before, I know my way out now. The 1v2 comes through and he gets himself a kill. Top lane, another engagement. Refugee is pulling himself. Spirit's Refuge definitely denying all of the damage from Victoria's oh. Reign. But we see seen Hitman actually go really ham. Tower shots are coming through and CJ Smoke is really starting to feel the hurt. Hitman needs to do something as Asmarex finds the kill and gets it. Down Kruger under fire, comes down with the taunt. Here comes the pop and it's going to be a kill onto Victorious Reign. That is a free to Urgot. What is happening? 11 kills and 10 kills. Oh, oh man. Oh. DJ with the Meteor secures the kill. Ulti and comes through same. as well. He doesn't have anything. The Feverstorm's oh. there. The Blade Callers are coming back. Can he root him up? Oh. Asmalex fights the kill. What happened there? This is amazing. Asmalex guided with his ultimate to get all the feathers in one line. And he was like, hey, you want to see my wings fly with me to death? That was beautiful coming in from Asmalex. This guy is showing his true colors on this game until now. He died the 1v2, he learned, he adapt, he overcome on the next part. He got the 1v2 on the second, and now he still gets a kill before going down. Another engage! Go, Rain, go! Yeah, Daybreak does pin Van Cleef in place for a little bit. He forces the flash out of him as Chongi was hanging around, looking for the opening onto him, but can't find it. We are 15 minutes into this game, Arkarom, and the gold is dead even between Omnia and iExtreme. All of the teams in this tournament are looking so close as the Chunk comes through onto Chunky. He's going to get thrown in. Here's a great bubble and Van Cleef has gone in with a flash and the taunt and the knockup. All of the damage onto Bloodhound secures a kill onto Asmalix. That's going to be his fifth kill of the game and mid lane tier one is going to come under siege. And it's going to be in favor of Onia. It was I Extreme trying to push the tier one turret like five minutes ago. And this time it's going to be Onia that are going to open up the map pressure. And they have the vision. We've seen Onia control the vision in this way and getting a lead over the opponent. And this is a beautiful game, even though it's a massive blood fest. We almost have a kill per minute for each team. Did you expect any more from this game? Did you not expect a blood fest from the first two games? All in honest, game. I did. I did. <laughs> I'm biased. <laughs> because I'm not present on this game, so we can expect happy times. They're making it work no matter what, and the team there's no one to kind of bounce this game back for teams. As bot lane tier one is taking a minion wave, walked into it, and there are four members walking through <laughs> from the IX stream lineup just to free. Now actually Vladimir is roaming down and Hitman has spotted him, so it looks like we're actually Ooh. gonna have a bit of a trade. Pretty well gets thrown out, same with the Valkyrie. It said power Ooh, spike. Oh, that Oh, Chungi forced to Zonyas. That's just his stopwatch. Does have a flash. He's going to go over the wall if he needs to. Throws down the ulti as well. Hemo Plague is there. Curtain. Is the heal going to be enough? No, he gets chunked up, locked down, and cleanses. Not enough. He could have flashed instantly. As soon as he saw them approaching, he could have flashed away. But at least this time, they get enough to get the turrets. It's another engage. There's another engage indeed. DG Joe is under fire. Bubbles are coming out and they're not quite popping yet. Here comes Van Cleef as he gets rooted up by the Zenith Blade. Here's the ulti as well. Great free man knockup from the Nami bubble with a blade cooler and 
the feather spawn. <laughs> he's massive. A two-man knockout comes through from the bubbles. And I extreme find all the crucial picks. Where are That's you going? Be the fear of death coming through. Two kills onto Victorious Reign. My goodness, and I, I gotta be honest, Bramble Vest on Van Cleef, first item. Now, this is exactly what I was talking about on the previous game. You need this item because you look at the enemy team and EG is in trouble. He is in trouble. Here comes Asmex with the double daggers. Hasn't got the blades in place. He's just gonna have to land it as the blade cooler comes down. Two tower shots is all he needs. And Asmelix is out of there. Seven free on the Zaya. He is popping off. Okay, I'm going back a little bit because I need to talk about this Bramble Vest, but there's not a second to lose. Okay, Bramble Vest on Ramos, early game. Why do you need that? Because if you look at the enemy team, they are heavily reliant on auto attacks. So you need to get as much damage as you can and tankiness as well. And at that team fight, they were forced to auto attack Ramos and one suicide because of that. He needed to kill Ramos, but he had to kill himself in order to do it. So that's one member down and a lot of HP removed as well and Grievous wounds also being applied. This is a massive item, even though it's so cheap for Ramus, it's a massive item coming in. And uh, Hip Rain, we are about to hit the mark of one kill per minute for <laughs> Onia. iExtreme is getting a little bit behind, man. We need to get more kills. iExtreme work tied Four minutes to go with Omnia. Now that gold lead has extended in the favor of them though. And now Omnia are kind of showing up. They've proved time and time again that after that 20 minute mark, that's when they start to really <laughs> pop off and come alive. They've got, <laughs> what, 30 seconds to take this Herald? Actually, it's not even that long, is it? No, they have like 10 seconds to take it now. There's the curtain call thrown into the Valkyrie with the packages it gets delivered. Featherstorm comes in with a dunk, but the damage is just way too big on the Bloodhound as he gets picked up. Now we have every bit of CC onto Gijo, just forcing him down. That's going to be two kills picked up for the side of Omnia. Hitman does have a Blast Plant available. It's going to get popped as the Zenith Blade comes down. They're going to sacrifice the Leona one more time. It's a free for zero. Hitman could go down and this could be a Here four for zero. Van Cleef speeds in. Yes, the knockoff. It's a double kill. And Victorious Reign will continue to siege on this top lane. The only positive thing on this team fight for IX Extreme was the fact that Rift Herald was not killed in favor of Onya because he died. Aside from that, it was all in favor of Onya. They're keeping up with these team fights. The Proto Belt is helping Chongi so much. I, I just want to peek at this. How long? It's a three second cooldown on the queue of Vladimir. And he only has 20%. Oh, bot line. The fear of death is going to come down. He looks like an extreme. Kruma is just going low and Victorious Reign doesn't even need to use his ulti to secure that kill. Nice and easy, Kruma fools. Yeah, the Black Cleaver, Frozen Molot. Urgot just destroys pretty much every single melee tank that you can put in front of him. And well, they picked into Urgot. It was not a counter pick of Urgot versus Shen, it was the opposite. So he needs to shine if he wants. Oh! Oh! It's a short cooldown, it's not too bad. It's only 50 seconds at this point. Almost Asmalek. finding a pick onto Asmalex. Would have been fried. That would be a fried turkey. <laughs> <laughs> We are on theme, man. We are on theme. Is she a turkey? Turkeys are normally quite ugly. Zai is quite a pretty champion. Yeah, Lots she is. But, it, but it's not on theme, you know? It, it's not a time of... of, of <laughs> okay. uh, it's a time I of I think you don't fry parrots as well. Exactly. That's, that's a no-no. <laughs> that's a no-no. <laughs> They're pretty. We don't eat them. So Righteous Glory for Urgot will be bought in a few seconds as soon as he goes back. So this will be even more bad news for our extreme Kurama. Because he won't be able to get away. As soon as he gets away from a turret, Ergot will just chase him off and kill him eventually. Bad news coming in for Kurama. Good news coming in for Onya and Baron. Oh no, you don't attack the ward if you're doing the Baron. But still, they're not replying. They now are fully aware of it. I expect to see a team fight come through, but this Baron is just liquefied. As Omnia pick it up, super simple. Mad Smoke is a little low, so he even wants to kind of get his healing up. Yeah, his heels. He's got um, he's got himself. <laughs> yeah, he's got the uh, Arden sensor, so he's he's pretty good on the healing front. 
And that Baron went way too fast. I, I believe I Extreme were not expecting that to happen. And Onya are showing themselves so strong after the win versus Paradox. And they're keeping it true. They're now using this Nasha very well as they're pushing it up. 10,000 gold in the lead. Just sieging away slowly. Remember, there is still a big Wombo combo available to the I Extreme lineup. And they can pull it off if they find it onto Asmarix. That is their key target to kill. But remember, Victoria's reign is incredibly tanky as well. And also does a serious amount of damage. Remember when I said on the previous game that they couldn't engage? Well, this game, it's not the same story. They need to engage. They have the <laughs> tools, they have the damage, they have to. It, it's a necessity if they keep pushing on the mid lane with the Baron. It's also the um, armor penetration build for the Jin, but it looks like here comes the engage. It looks like oh. seafood is made for Bloodhound as we actually see the Vladimir come in with the ultimate. That's going to be one of the Asmalik so far as Chonky's entered in. What's the count? Count two. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. He gets the kill. Jijo gets dropped as a suppression oh. comes down. The Fear Beyond Death finds the kill. Jin gets oh. thrown up. It's beautiful. It's a massacre. It's a double kill as the Nexus turrets are going to be under fire. Baron buff is in tow. They had to engage and they had to find a squishy target. They did. The problem was it was a Nami. It was not Zaya. And Zaya was on the back line, just demolishing every single one of them. 11, 3, 10. Asmalex is a beast at this point. And they're going to take game, I believe. They are going to take game unless Bloodhound can do something. A miracle is not in the bag as he's entered in, gets thrown over. The Nexus is incredibly low and that's going to be the end of the game. Omnia beat down I Extreme. Tough news for I Extreme, but really good news for Omnia, who I believe are now sitting on top of the group after this victory.